we caught a swarm today in one of our swarm traps, just not at all how we expected. All right, so I was at, uh, at work and missed the, all the excitement today, so I'm gonna interview Isaac. So what happened? Um, you guys, well, first off, let me say this. We had, uh, hold that thought. We had a uh, two entomologists, they're married, a couple, who specialize in honeybee research at our school today where one of our teachers teaches an entomology class and we've got two hives at school. So they came and talked about entomology, beekeeping, beekeep, uh, honeybee research, but then went out and did a hive inspection. And while they were doing that, uh, they talked obviously a little bit about swarm, swarm cells, swarm behavior, catching swarms, etc. And so Chantel brought Isaac, Sam, and Mary Francis along for a homeschool lesson uh, about, uh, figured they you know would be there and uh, learn a little bit more uh, about beekeeping and all, also entomology. So anyways, you guys came home. Yeah. And? Um, yeah, talk loud. Well, Mary Frances was take, was walking the dog and she came up here. She said, she came back inside. She's like, Mom, there's a big clump of bees in a tree. And so we went up here and we couldn't find it at first. Um, and we checked all the beehives and then we went and got her and she showed us. And then there's in this tree right here. There's a cedar, uh, eastern red cedar tree just right here, just past where this, this swarm trap is. It's about like four feet up on a big branch and so then my mom called him and he started telling my mom uh, what to do but then my mom gave him a phone to me and then he just told me to cut the branch and just shake it down into one of our swarm traps so you went down this is a swarm trap we built we built two swarm traps put one up in a tree down by the pond and there's another one still up in the woods so we don't have we didn't have any extra hive bodies around but we've got these swarm traps that already have frames in them so yeah i said go grab one of the swarm traps put it down on the ground you guys cut off the branch i guess this branch that they were on put a sheet down here underneath them uh, to make sure that when they shook it off one to see where the bees were and make sure that if the queen was on the ground they didn't accidentally step on her that would be disastrous with a swarm uh and so that they could see but anyway shook it in i guess your mom shook the uh she shook the bees in didn't have to wear any protective gear the bees are really really calm in a swarm and so she shook them down into the swarm trap the thing we had to do was take the middle four frames out I just took those out and then there's like a big nice big gap where you shook them in and then put the frames in. Smart. So very smart. Cool. And then just what did you just like ease the frames yeah, back just down on the top right and they just sort of settled in on top yeah. of these? But since we have the little things that like squish the, them together so they don't move, um, the last one was a little tricky to get in without like squishing any bees. But eventually you like push it down. Cool. Well anyways, they're in there and we caught uh, 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 one of we assume it came from one of our hives either that one or the one right there we're just in the hives uh, but time goes quick out here so it's probably been a couple of weeks since we checked the hives they must have drawn out a swarm cell and decided to uh, decided to swarm so just fortuitous but kind of crazy that we had bee people entomologists that study bees talking about swarms and came home and we had a swarm from one of our hives right here in this tree but we caught them so now we have another colony of bees it's pretty exciting but it means i got to make more uh hive components hive, hive body components uh so another project uh, on the homestead that has to happen quickly but anyways good job yeah it's pretty cool huh amazing never cease to be amazed by these creatures yeah, mom was a little confused. She said, like, I'm a little disappointed that it was our hive that we had to catch and not somebody else's. <laughs> and But she didn't know that they split. So she just thought we were catching our own hive uh, again. Gotcha. I was like, no, we have five hives now. Yep. And so, yeah, so yeah. the way hives work, people don't know, is this is how bees reproduce. So if they feel like they're overcrowded, especially in the spring, uh, nectar flow getting ready to go on, they'll 
um, it's really cool. They will take the, uh, once the workers make the decision to split the hive, they will start not feeding the queen as much. So they put her on a diet because she's got to lose weight. They'll actually shake her, uh, physically go up to her and grab hold of her and kind of vibrate her, kind of like those old weight loss machines that they made in the 40s and 50s with a belt around it, which try and shake people as if that lost weight. But that is what they do to the queen because then she has to kind of resist against them and it causes her to burn more energy and because they're not feeding her as much, she starts losing weight. And the whole idea, the reason why they're doing that is to get her ready to be able to fly because when she's fully loaded with and she's in egg laying mode and she's very fat and happy, she can't fly very well. So they get her uh, slimmed down so that she's able to fly off with the half of the colony. So the scouts go out, find a new place. It's pretty neat. They'll find multiple locations. And then in the moment, once they're making the decision of where the colony is going to go, like when they're in the last few hours, the scouts will uh, zero in on one location. And if you see where it is, you'll start seeing a bunch of scouts in one place. And once that decision is made, the bees that have already come out at that point uh, in a swarm and they're resting on a branch near the hive they just came from, the scouts will come back, get them, and tell them where to go. And then in mass, the swarm will go to the new hive location. So we were very fortunate that Mary Frances saw them because probably within a span of several hours, they would have left didn't appear that they were going to go to either of our swarm traps because there weren't any bees around them. Uh, so they were going to go somewhere. We would have lost half our, our, uh, half our bees. So this is how you, uh, one of the ways that the ways nature works is that they reproduce and create new colonies is that they just split. So what was one hive is now two. So I've uh, just got to build some more components frame bo uh, hive bodies and uh, add some more frames so that they can expand. But uh, anyways, yeah, that's it. That's how swarms work. It's pretty cool. Uh, anyways, great job. Glad you guys did it. I was in the middle of, I couldn't, I couldn't leave work and was in the middle of getting ready to do an interview. And uh, so <laughs> I had to talk them through how to do it. I hate that I missed it. Uh, first time I would have seen us. I've never seen a swarm. So they've got to see something I didn't get to see. And uh, Anyways, that's it. Thought we'd uh, share the story and document uh, our first our first swarm. Thanks for watching. We'll see you in the next video. Take care. God bless.